Hello everyone, Cole's Corner. Thank you for listening, thank you for your messages and appreciations and challenges. Uh, like questions, like um, anything to bounce off, because I'm speaking to many, I don't, I'm not even sure who they are, just speaking my heart and I speaking my years and years of experience with write you several books and I have to say I'm still in a, on a very mild introduction to this profound and giant part of ourself that is our will. I think it's always good to be reminded we are not talking about willpower we're talking about part of ourselves that only feels. Now, I introduced something last in the last podcast, number eight, um, that I was going to speak more about what does this healthy will really looks like, and what is it use, so to say. Even so, that word is kind of weird in this contempt, con- contempt because she is this most exquisite light one can ever, ever be present for and being touched by. I open up Righteous of a book and on one of the pages and I had this sign there saying, false will okay so what i like to introduce there is that (laughs) it was like oh that's a good hint uh you know when we actually in a very early days we took a million of millions of years on some level denied the will we made something called a false will yeah Um, when our true feelings are not accepted instead we make these false feelings and I often it's demonstrative like you ask somebody how they feel or you ask how am I feeling and the minute you speak speaking you begin to speak you're actually describing something that's not necessary your will Talking about feelings is not expressing the will. Will does not express through talking. Now, when a will begins to vibrate, when we're having feelings that are freed from from the tyranny of the mind and, uh, and the labels we placed on the feelings begin to be released, this will begins to move. And then the feelings begin to move everything they have not been able to move for eons. And so, you know, having feel, having a sick feeling or throwing up or, or being sick, actually physically ill, is a normal expression of these old feelings that had no chance to yet express. But those are not really uh, necessarily even true feelings as yet. True feeling is that which is free to be what it is. So the mind has to be trained to become receptive to these true feelings that are arising. So daily practice could be, well, how am I feeling about this and that? And then stay with it without going on tangents and thinking about different things, just go, how does this make me feel? And now I wait. And it might seem like there is nothing happening. So the mind will rush in, and now we're talking about the false feelings, eh? the false will. Mind will try to walk in, and it becomes like a walk in. <laughs> And then it, it will want to 
tell you what it thinks is going on. That's not the will, because the feelings don't talk. Second, like, no, if the feelings don't talk, how do they express? They have a different means of communication to thoughts. So my thoughts express through words. My feelings express through being felt and being felt. And that is the language of the feeling. Okay? And you might say, well, I do that all the time. And I believe you, yeah? And there are many of us who are very well polarized. I'm not one of those. I have to really work on being able to learn to be present for my feelings. Some people, there are so much in their feelings that they can't think. And so that's the uh, will polarity of, of the people who are very, very feeling. And they're basically expressing constantly by feeling, often not being able to make them visible because the predominance of thinking on the planet is, is extreme. Yeah. So really coming back to how am I really feeling, um, the now feeling that when it arises, I am not trying to place labels on it, I am not trying to explain it to anyone, I'm simply allowing that feeling to do its thing, and I am more like a, a loving witness not just witness, because witness could be can be punitive. Witness could be like, ugh, not this feeling again. That's not a loving presence. Yeah. So most of the training in light, right, you saw, well, in my actual transformation with uh, with right, you saw, well, books was very much about this attitude towards my feelings. Yeah. So eventually, one trains the mind not to interfere in the feeling process. So now we have a free will. And when the will is free to truly express as she needs to express, there is no expectations, there is no manipulations, there is no pushing it to do something ahead of its time. There is just simply this quiet presence. It just simply is. But it's attention and it's very loving and almost like receptive attention, non-judgmental to see what arises. See, the minute my mind goes into that place, my will goes, oh. And my breath changes. My speech slows down. And now my legs vibrate more. And, I st and now it's just starting to become almost like thick in there, like... I've gone into this more like a pudding, you know, really t like a thicker substance of feeling. But all of this is somehow shimmering. It has a life, it has vibration, and it is brand new. And I can't name it because it's brand new. It hasn't got a label. Yeah. And... This is the this is the the new this is the birth of the feminine on earth when we return to making us up stuff that does not really fulfill us and step back and get completely fulfilled filled with a feeling by our own will and as she is able to do it, she begins to resonate, she begins to vibrate, she begins to actually sing. She's beginning to sing a tune of the 
of the great mother that it's obviously going to sound everyone for differently than someone else it's our own individual divine will making herself now known yeah. and when she begins to reverberate herself the spirit gets or our mind of that which is present for it with an unconditional acceptance you know like there's somewhere in the books you know the father aspect says I am with the mother unconditionally now yeah so I'm just with her I am not pulling away from her because she's too much I am not going too much into her I am waiting for the invitation I'm waiting for an invitation for the mother to take me maybe you remember from previous podcast I was talking about that movie where these guys coming into this mother mothership and suddenly they lose control and the other guy goes he goes don't worry she will you can't just you, you, can, you can't just walk into that realm and think you know what you're gonna be doing in there you know she takes you in hope you can hear my cicadas outside particularly now in the evening they really take off and so same with the will suddenly she takes me in it's like with a, with a love making you know there there is a couple and you know man they always just so quick to usually just um just want to just want to go in hey eh? whereas the you know the uh this, you know the the vulva the 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 vagina she she must be ready to take it in he must be he must be bringing something for her to want her to be inside her and that's the kind of more like a physical manifestation of this hey but it has to be this time when she's desiring this present uh, non-emotional penis to 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 join her okay and not necessarily just do his own beating and his own movement and his own whatever it is for a man when he does what he calls sexuality but where it comes and becomes a union of the two where his sexual pictures are no longer there when he's not thinking of having what he had a week ago or a month ago or when he was a little boy and he had his first sexual experiences that's all emotional non-present you know historically sort of infected really with all sorts of conditioning uh, unpresent presence you know it's not here it wants to it wants to get off on itself or unless it's really done enough work and knows how to be fully present hey and when such entity arrives near it the the vulva basically begins to sort of pull pull in yeah so I'm I'm using that also in in a, in a sexual union is that that you know he becomes present in the now unknown what's it's just like here I am in my presence and then a dance begins and same thing between two people like when man is truly present yeah he's not hoping for something he's just in his fullness and he's content because his will is vibrating he's fulfilled by his own feelings his feelings reverberate his heart and his mind is ignited his mind is ignited into this exquisite now presence and it's inspired 
I can say it's a fresh, it's a mind that goes like, it's witty, it's switched on, and it knows where to take the moment. It just knows. There's a there's a knowing in there. It goes like, hey, we're going this way, and she goes, oh, thank God, I don't have to think about that, because female doesn't want to think. She wants to feel. Why do men want to be with a woman, number one, if they're a little bit evolved? Because she can bring more feeling into the relationship than he can bring into the, into the relationship himself. Vice versa, the, why would a woman want to be with a man? Because he, with that inspired mind, can take her deeper than she can take herself. And I'm saying, hey, you can take yourself into amazing places, I bet. And when that presence comes in, there is another something that ignites a greater opening. And a woman has a capacity to, to, to go more open than she's ever been. Yeah? And in a sense, more vulnerable but in a sense more divine, yeah? And it takes a certain amount of practice when, where man can be this unshakable, solid foundation, you know? Build your house on rocks, right? So he's transformed his erection into a resurrection. He's a resurrected man in himself. His feelings flow upwards. He's not thinking about some kind of amazing result. He's just fully present and he's in a creative power. The more she opens to that presence, the more present he become, present he become. More present he become, the more she's going to relax and open those those part of herself that has not yet been open. There are those virgin places that are, that are, I'll say, the word that's coming up says they're dying to be open. They're dying to be discovered. They're dying to be shared. It's like, it's like the gifts of the feminine are more profound than anything one can ever dream of on earth, you know. You can have the fastest freaking boat, or you can have a shiniest car, but when a woman opens those places, there's nothing in this world that matches that. And that's the divine union. And what the two are doing, they're creating the new heart between them. So that's the birth of Christ. Bingo. That's the true, true, holy relationship where I am whole. She is already in her wholeness. She is not needy. She doesn't come from lack. She's simply gifted by her own gifts. She's found them and she's, she's opened them. She's whole in herself. And to be fully whole in herself, feminine has to really be able to feel so much that her mind ignites. Her own mind ignites. And then that ignited mind draws in a man who has equally ign ignited being. And now they can begin to create. So it's no longer about sitting around and discussing issues, right? It's um, <laughs> you wouldn't all, you wouldn't want to exchange this exchange with with dabbling on about this and this and you know how you need him to be different or he how you need to be different. You're basically done with that, and obviously that is the individual work first. And when I don't need anything, it's like personally, I don't actually. I don't need anyone. I'm completely content in myself. Now, if 
it happens and I find myself in a relationship, it's beautiful. Because I don't need it, but it enriches the moment. She doesn't need me, but it enriches her life too. So now we can meet and be truly present for each other. And in that sense, we're creating a, a new world. You know, we're birthing a new world. So that masculine is the plus, she's the minus, and the electromagnetic field that's between them is the love that's creating a new form, new relationship, new oneness between people that's, that's based on creation rather than by, you know, by some kind of lack that the other needs to fulfill. And if they don't, there is no love. So it is very difficult to really express what this healed will really is because this is a daily awakening. My will opens more and more as, as I am ready to receive her. I can't speed this up. You know, as a spirit, I want to go way, way faster, but I know I am, I am on my trip. I am, my mind is preoccupied with past thoughts of some kind of achievement that's delusional. Because the will vibrates in the speed of light that is actually the most appropriate for me. If I could... Um, if I'm game enough and I attune and that also happens with in a partnership where I'm on my mission I do my things you know I teach music I do this podcast you know I've got I'm running men's groups um, where I teach men these principles um, so they can go home and serve greater good in a way that um, is brand new, that's just, there's not some I've written in the books that we're discovering by opening this, these new places in ourselves, creating. And of course, I'm a father to a 12 year old boy as well. So there is that responsibility, and um, and then there is my own movement, my own transformation, my own need to to spend time, quality time with um, aligning my own will with my own will, not aligning her <laughs> as a very slippery realm that one. And really learning how to attune also to her needs. And there is this very beautiful thing when I attune with her, and I speak to her, I say, hey, <laughs> you know, if I'm inauthentic like that, hey, it was so not really there. <laughs> she goes, gives me this look, you know, I mean, she's a, she's a living being that I feel. She had, there's no images there. There is kind of like a, I call it images, like a feeling imagery, which is more like a textural sensations and um, but they're so rich in color like there are colors when she really oozes I see colors that I've never seen before even so there are normal colors like we know but they have something to them which I've never seen before and it's always new and there are sounds that are brand new and there is everything is ignited into like the shimmering light that um, floods my imagery even my images are completely transformed through this wealth uh, presence with wealth opening and um, lately what I'm experiencing is that experiencing is that 
that spirit and the will so aligned in the heart that my body feels almost like it's elevated to a frequency where I have a sensation like I don't have the body that I remember. I feel like I have a new body that I'm part of, that is part of me, that I wasn't aware. And there are, um, and really this is not me wanting to talk about myself. I'm like, whoa, look what I've achieved. Actually, it's not like that at all. I am only finding uh, avenues on how to express this uh, with my presence and with my um, with what I'm on about. But I'm also, in, in a way, it's like maybe a, an example of what these 30 years we're doing these will books, where they, what is actual the end result so far. And I always feel like, oh my God, this is just the beginning. And um, yesterday, I hooked up with my friend Cindy and we were just reading in the book six and it's like one sentence and I go, oh my God, can you stop right there? And then it comes into this silence for so long and all I can do is reverberate in sound and uh, just be in that depth, in that vibration of the feeling realm. Um, so feelings like, I don't know, I could say feelings like sadness or any of those like a general feelings, you know, grief. They're just not no longer a part of my daily expression. I think they all got so loved up and so expressed that they no longer appear to be that way. And I seem to be in this one reverberating feeling that generates a brand new, fresh experience. And um, this sort of disappearance of the form as I knew it, you know, the release of my men mental construct of what I think my physicality is, is, is changing um, also my physical vibratory rates. Um, and one thing that I'm noticing a lot is that <laughs> um, there's somehow always a joy wherever I go. You know, the kids I teach, they walk into my room, and they start cracking up for no reason at all. <laughs> they just start laughing. And and even teenagers, boy, that boys that come who play guitar, like, you know, uh, we play all these weird songs that are on the chart, some of the music these days, like a pure distortion. Um, um, and um, even they begin to crack, you know, they have this teenage kind of mentality and at some point they just go, so man, I don't know what it is, but something's really funny. I go, yeah, I know. And so it, this will has this power to touch anything. It's like there's a beautiful lesson in the Cause of Miracles that says, God goes with me, with me wherever I go. And it's almost just like that, that, that as my inner kingdom have changed, or as my inner self change into the inner kingdom, it seems like my outer reality is beginning to reflect it. And uh, I don't seem to find myself in many conflicts. I find myself in, in some 
um, situations that are too odd. It's somewhere in the second book, it, it is actually explained. It's like the, they talk, they call it the golden age, and uh, it's, it says, you know, it's not like the golden ages will, will just appear to you. You have to really change it within yourself first. And that change is that if we realign the spirit and the will in us, it changes our alchemy. And we become our alchemists. And our feelings begin to ooze a different light. And our thoughts will switch off in a different way and they don't think like that, you know, being caught up in a mind and ramaging around the head about some issues that simply simply ceases and then there is like is a it feels like an everlasting quiet. Hmm. And um, hmm. so my aim was to get to this place with my previous podcast, and um, all these other things came up that I wanted to get into. And so, just coming back that, how does one manifest um, and transform the whole thought system? And one is this, if we can take more time with what we're saying, you know, with ideas in our mind, and we let them to be felt, we begin to experience the divinity of even our own language gets transformed. And that leads me to um, where I wanted to go with this. Um, Righteous Oval talks about, you know, God says in the book, says, you know, I sent Jesus as my heart. But these teachings are not yet understood on earth. And that always resonated in me because I've got this profound connection to Jesus that, you know, we met. And uh, ever since that happened, uh, even this whole righteous of all thing kind of integrated. It's almost like a spirit and a will integrate heart, heart, but also heart can integrate spirit and a will. And because I've always been an ardent student of Course of Miracles and and Righteous of All for really more than 30 years with the Course of Miracles and I think about 28 years with, with Righteous of Will. Um, and I could never do them together because they were like they they almost like contradict each other because one is about training the mind and the other one is all about emotions and feelings and their responses and their expressions and I would say something from Course of Miracles and my will, my will would go like you know, I wanted to vomit and I go, why is it like that? you know and it's because there is part of us that actually, part of our will, that will was expecting to receive light. And so it opened and it didn't receive light. It actually received nothing. Example could be, you know, man is open to receive, woman is open to receive a man and she thinks he's going to come with roses and love and he comes with some horrible undercurrent and everything just goes like she's so open and gets nothing. 
and that's extremely painful for the feminine and it's extremely painful for my will that's why I know it's painful for the feminine and uh, and um, the will there's a there are part of the will that has not been exposed to light yet and no matter how evolved we think we are there are still part of the will what we call lost will that has never seen light that's why she will come out and she will be like squinting and she'll be like shy she'll be uncertain she'll be like Ooh, you know like those Indian pictures when she's looking from like like the shy look hiding away almost kind of like oh I'm not sure if I'm ready to open this so those very very subtle little, little you know and and I come with the cause of miracles and cause of miracles is such a profound and quantum um, judgment release actually the whole book is um, a mind training which helps us to sort out our thinking and from the very beginning of right of course the miracles particularly the exercises Jesus is teaching us to slow down step one always says repeat the lesson to yourself slowly why does he do that he will say hey I'm the light of the world what? I'm the light of the world. Uh-huh. Right? Are you? Yeah, I'm the light of the world. Can you feel there's like nothing in it? But how about you say, I. Who? I. Say it. I. Who is that? I. And you get in touch with that word. You manifest the world I. I am that I. Who is the I that you call I? You say it a few times, and if your will is vibrating on any rate, she will demonstrate to you who is the I that you call the I am that. You know, don't have to sit on your bum for a long time trying to get to that. You can just ask it and you shall receive. By the way, ask and you shall receive it is instantaneous. You think that thought and a will immediately manifests it manifests it but if your feelings are deadened by a, their constant attack and punitive attitude they have no chance to manifest it so mind rushes in and goes oh it's, it's just you as god created you and you go aha that's what it is and now you have like a mind construct you think it's holy and you know, you just keep calling, walking around, says, I am love, I am this. But your body and your emotional body and your will and your heart are not necessarily ignited by that idea, unless they are. And hey, in that case, I bow down and we've joined. We definitely, they will have to meet in that one place, which is called union, in which we all abide on some level, purely. Mm. Righteous will also start saying, you know, there was perfection and will be again. And not many of us are on this perfection yet. And um, how do we know? Because when we turn on the news or we look around, you know, there is not, it's not reflected everywhere yet. And so back to the inner work, because the outer reflects mostly, uh, is mostly reflected by the inner. So I am the light. I'm what? The light. What is light? Um, what is light? And now I'm waiting for my will to go this. She's already showing it to me, right, in her way. But if I'm not frequently attuned to her, I'm going to replace it by false images. And I can convince myself 
that I know what light is. But it's not necessarily an ignition in the body that is like this semi-orgasmic state that goes on and on and on. So I, now when I say I, it's like, oh, am the light. What? I am the light. No one else. <laughs> it's I am the light of the world, you know. Jesus said it. He goes, don't follow me. You know, follow my ways. Say, I'm the light of the world. See you later. Get your will to manifest it for you. Get Become the God that you are. See you later. I go, thanks for that. I'll do it myself, right? But he gives you a hint. And he gives you this. I mean, for me, when I had that meeting, it was like, it was like a, it was like a one second thing. And it was like, just looked at me and I recognized the whole kingdom of heaven within me. And just sat there in complete and utter, just like, beyond words. I couldn't even say that. <laughs> I couldn't even say it. I was like stunned beyond. I don't know. Can't say it. Got no words for it. There's no way this can be expressed in any way. And so that's all it is. Each of these statements. So when uh, Barry did these commands of happiness which then we named it um, saying of, of Jesus, I think. What did he call it? Let me look it up. I don't know how many of you guys got that. I recommend that after this listening, you find that again. Um, it's called Sayings of Jesus. Um, and I tell you now the story of this because... Um, <laughs> okay, he sent it out five days ago. Um, and um, it's got this picture of Jesus with this stick, you know, looking at the river. And a... Uh, sunset or sunrise actually sunrise because it begins when he came down from the mountain where he welcomed the sunrise those who gathered at the foot of the mountain said you are the source of inspiration for us your word your words change heart and your wisdom brightens the mind we want to listen to you right and they say tell us who we are and he goes he smiled and said you are the light of the world okay so that's the one I am in the I am who I am the light of the world because unless I awaken to this what that truly means what that really means and it's not it's not anything that I kind of ascribe to myself It's not, you know, um, it, it, it doesn't describe me the way I see myself, yeah? But it describes me at what this will actually shows me. You know, in Cause of Miracle, they call this will in a sense, like a vision. But the vision will show you. Because it is like, if I say, I... And I ask, what does that mean? What is that? And then it shows, it's it's shown to me. I haven't read it anywhere. No one told me. No one demonstrated it. Um, but there it was. Brand new thing. Like, 
something that you can't compare with anything from the past. Even the most profound awakening you might have had three or four years ago, this will will this one will be incomparable to that one. Incomparable because it's always brand new and the journey that's in front of us in this discovery what it is like to live in the paradise what to really live like with an aligned will which what it is when when a spirit and a will balance oh god when a when a will balances in the heart and when it ignites, when all of it ignites, and I, I, I could just feel, I can feel this, like my will so ignited, and I can feel my spirit somewhere is just, still has a bit of a rigid, there's something rigid about it, and I just want to go like, oh, I just want to smack it. <laughs> just like, I just felt this loveless attitude, it's like this, for this masculine rigidity this freaking uh, low life um, patriarchal dried up freaking dictator that just sits there and goes yeah I'm not gonna move you know and um, well it's just I had an experience just then of having almost like a grief how that masculine just so wants to have its way and the spirit how it wants to control and be in charge and be this controlling punitive dictator and then yeah no wonder no wonder we manifest these leaders that are just you know like twisted in some way you know and where does that come from it comes from me you know, I'm responsible for everything I see. And it's up to me to shift this. And as I shift this, it will shift out there. So I'm the light of the world. It's, it's nothing um, that I ascribe to myself. The light of the world is shown to me through the will. And so I'm just going to go through these sayings and and maybe demonstrate how can they be actually not just little word like barely recorded it it's eight minutes long and you know at the end you can say what a lovely thing <laughs> but it's actually way bigger than just a lovely little read and i quickly need to say so how it actually came to me Four years ago, I think roughly, a friend of mine dropped this onto my Facebook in a Czech, Czech language, and I'm not a Czech, I'm Czech, not Czech, I'm Slovakian, from the ex Czechoslovakian Republic. Now it's Slovak Republic and Czech Republic, and I, I come from the, the capital of Slovakia called Bratislava. And I lived there for 23 years from my childhood. And um, and so a friend of mine translated it into Slovak. Uh, that language, although I can still speak it quite well, it's, you know, I've, I'm not as good at it. At it anymore and um, so she made this very beautiful translation in of in Slovakian and ever since then I've been looking for uh, the English equivalent of this and I'll have never found it so if any of you guys ever come across this and say hey I've got this in English because you know what I did I just put it into Google Translate <laughs> and this Google Translate, you put it in, I don't know if any of you used it, you put a whole page or two, this is about a few pages long, you put it in there and within a second you get a printout in English. <laughs> and that's the printout in English. But I have to say, 
it's very good. So that's what you guys are listening to. But on that Slovakian version, it's said that it comes from the sea scrolls that were found in in a, in a Dead Sea Scrolls, yes. And so I downloaded the Dead Sea, Dead sea Scroll because I thought, oh God, maybe I find like the original, you know, the closest translation from whatever it was in Aramaic. And uh, um, bingo, I never found any anything even remotely resembling to the simplicity of these expressions. And why I know about this, because about when I started getting acquired with Course in Miracles in the, in at the end of around 87, 88, 89, somewhere at that time, I, um, I began to hear a voice and it never said much. I might have said this into my previous podcast. It never said much. It just said very simple two, sometimes one, sometimes two, sometimes three letters of a sentence. Maybe once I think it said four. And and when that voice said those things, I pretty much could not eat or work or do anything just just sit in this absolute amazement of that experience and when these came to me they are all just like that they are very very simple lines and if anything that I know of Jesus and I've been Jesus' follower for a very long time and you know Corsimicles is an exquisite account of of a direct transmission and a support course of love absolutely phenomenal because uh, he, you know he, here I can intru- introduce something that I, I would like to go into uh, in my next podcast when I'm done with anything that I have to say or could say or feel like saying from to do with right you so well and I want to talk about the trilogy I think it's the most profound trilogy which is Course of Miracles for the Mind, um, the Chorus of Love for the Heart, and Write You So Well for anything to do with understanding this feeling self. Um, write You So Well, pretty much like a cor- it's like a Course of Miracles for feelings and more. Um, I think it's the most superior piece of work, but it's very hard to to say because I have my Course of Miracle runs and then boom, I'm suddenly doing right you so well and then I've expressed plenty and I feel like I've done enough and then boom, Course of Love kicks in and explodes my heart into my latest transmission of heart actually moved from my chest into way lower than that and I really feel the center of our being which is heart is not in a place that is commonly known as as our heart is usually around the chest and sternum it's um it's much deeper than that anyway my personal experience um People can think whatever they like. So, taking these sayings um, and really stay saying with each sentence, and um, just like that one, he smiled and said, "You are the light of the world." So here I am saying to you, I guess, you, you are the light of the world, not Jesus, not Buddha. Not anyone else. Muji, no, I don't know who is out there these days that people go, ooh, him, he's got it, she's got it. No, 
You got it. You are the second coming of Christ. You are your own heart awakening. And your heart cannot awaken fully without the will. And your will cannot fully awaken until the mind is trained enough to learn how to stay even present for her. It's like you can see, like men don't know how to be present. Women also have a lot to do with not knowing how to be truly open and vulnerable and really in their softest, delicate realms that are available because of the harshness of this world. And I don't blame them. I mean, Jesus. You really need to establish a very safe place before you can come out and, you know, the radiate your your essence without it being trashed or attacked or perved on or, you know, you, you actually find that reciprocal of who you are. And uh, I often say, you know, like, if we think we're very awake and our partners are not, that's a very clear sign that uh, we're not awake. <laughs> because let me tell you, when you truly ignite who you are, your partner will go with you, guaranteed, or will run away and disappear. But if you're really there, the right man will be right in front of you or right woman will be right in front of you. So we constantly attra attracting our reciprocals. And so to look down on somebody is um, it's something to be transformed to the next level. And it goes, you are the temple of truth. Okay, I am the temple of truth. Now, first, this is just like a new age statement, in a way. But when suddenly your temple, your inner sanctum, your, king, your inner kingdom begins to ignite, because your will's vibrating, and your spirit is ignited, and, you know, your heart bursts its newness. <laughs> the fresh today freshly made you become a temple of truth rather than a house of illusions a house of projections and expectations and needs and whinges and eh, 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 you're not doing this and you're not doing that for me <laughs> you know it just doesn't exist you sit there you just go like you know I um at some point with Barry, we we started to swear a little bit. And it was really cool because we lost so many comments. People give us like 90 comments and then we start swearing and saying all this weird stuff. And <laughs> we got like eight comments. People like lost interest in us. But there's one word that I think is one of the most divine words in um you know, in the history of our ever um, English-speaking, I think that's the word fuck, because um, when I pray to God and I use that word, the things really happen. <laughs> and I know it sounds weird, and I know it sounds not nice, but I tell you, if I showed you guiltless living, um, you wouldn't believe that there is any light or, or love behind it, but it's very much so. <laughs> so, you know, like when the temple of truth that you are is shown to you, it's demonstrated. I think the only word that I could ever say is just that word. Let's go. It's amazing. <laughs> it leaves me stunned. It leaves me bow down. It leaves me in profound gratitude. And that's all I can say. Like, is this even possible? Right? So, yeah, you are the temple of truth. And until that temple of truth shows you what it is in you, 
you know, it's just a new age idea, really. You can put it on a fridge and you can put some nice violet scarf on and, you know, and think you're a goddess or you can, uh, I don't know what the new age guys do these days, but um, it's not it. It has to be the inner ignition. You are, you there is a universe in each of you, right? Like that thing when you look at the Milky Star and you go, wow, that seems like a far away. It's only far away because you must be far away from you. When this um, inner realm begins to open, you will see far beyond this little um, local section of the universe. You begin to connect to the vastness of beyond description huh? that the more you go in, the more you go out. The more you get, can go out, the more you will be able to go in. And then there is no end to the going inward, as there is no end to going outward. This is a really bad translation, but it says like subdue reason to the heart, basically saying, you know, drop your, drop your mind connected to the heart, ask your heart, listen through your love. How do you listen through your love? Well, first you have to feel it. Do you feel, do you feel love? Can you allow yourself to feel it more? Say yes. And more? And more than that? How about way more than what you think you can do? How about so huge that it completely loses the sense of your little self and you enter into the vastness of the whole cosmos. Full on drug experience without drugs. That's it. This heart is not a local, uh, it's not a pump that, that runs blood. It's this exquisite, indescribable, undescribable, un. Anyway, I'm starting to get a little bit stoned doing this because it's kind of like it changes the chemistry in the body. Blissful are those who know the language of being, right? It's got nothing to do with words. So there is your being, say hello and merge with it, even as a physical entity, including the ego mind. The delightful little car <laughs> that keeps disrupting anything that's real. Blissful are those who know the language of being. Yeah, because lang language of being is being in it. And then they go, "What is the meaning of life?" I don't know why I have, why I have this, but it cracks me up. It's like. What is the meaning of life? <laughs> These disciples, it's like as if they wanted to really know. And he goes, life is a way, a meaning and a reward. See, we were already given everything. And that just by mere fact that we're not giving everything that we were given, because we're not giving it, we're choking on it instead of igniting on it, instead of giving it away. And, but it, we already got everything, like the whole creation. Everything that you've ever could possibly desire sits in you. And unless it's ignited, it's just dormant. And then he goes, life. It's a dance of love. So it's this thing where you make yourself sit down and sit to, now for an hour, <laughs> set a timer. Because it does take a little practice to be able to stay present in love and just feel love in every cell of your body. 
in your bone marrow, on your in you know in your sitting muscles, in your name it, you know, in your nose, in your earlobes, in your hair, like everything is completely flooded by this movement, a dance of love. It's not a static thing. It's like, I love you, darling. Yeah, I love you too, sweetheart. Have a nice die. You know? <laughs> Have a nice die. Did you come to die or yes to die? <laughs> anyway, I live in Australia and have a really bad uh, Australian accent, so I shouldn't have done it. My guilt is taking me down. Anyway, check this one out. Your mission is to flourish. Now take that as a mission. Like, how would you flourish? So God, what do I do to flourish? Now the answer is already in me, yeah, and it's already moving something, okay? And it has to be like, ask and you shall receive. It's not like, ask and you shall receive one day. No, it's, ask and you shall receive now. If it's not now, um, you just miss the boat. And he goes, being is a great gift. Okay. Are you in touch with your being, entire being? Not just that thing that you call your body, but your whole being, all of it. And if you are, here we are sitting and we reunited, right? And I know you guys who who can connect to this. And um, But if you're not, you go, God, where the fuck is it, huh? Where is that being? What is my being? Ask. But you know, in the Bible said, ask with all your heart and all your mind and all your strength. So it doesn't say, dear God, would you be so kind? Get me in touch with my being. <laughs> and the God goes like, oh, what? <laughs> right? When you go, hey, oh, you know, you express with your passion, with your, oh, you know, with your, with the zest of life for life, you go, God, show me, boom, there it is. You know, don't have to sit around, wait. Mm -hmm. Your life is part of the history of the universe. And so on. And so on. Actually, I have a tiny little bit more time here. My I record on an iPad, and it just I think it it an hour, around an hour and ten minutes. It just goes. This is um, as far as we can go. Uh, here you go. Life is more beautiful than all theories. So feel life. This is feel. Join me. Yeah, sure. Let's do it together, guys. I love good company. I love company of people who like drop deep as like yeah, baby. <laughs> you know? Life is more beautiful than all theories. You know, like he says in the Course of Miracles, he goes, you know, forget this world, forget this course. Come with your holy empty hands. With your holy empty hands unto your wholeness. You can't bring any of these books, any of those sayings, any of any, even this, all rubbish. Eventually, it all turns into pure experience. And let me tell you, requires one thing the capacity to feel your true feelings so they can manifest every single word you say into a brand new experience. It's like, you know, you read a book and then you read it again and you go like, oh my God, how come I never heard this before? And then you read it again and you go, oh God, this is profound. And then you read it again and I'm translating and sending to Slovakia a lot of Course in Miracle lessons at the moment and, uh, and I'm like absolutely blown away what I'm discovering in Course in Miracles after 30 years. So, 
the book is written if it's understood a lot of people don't understand Course in Miracles and they dismiss it um, I don't know I guess they judge it you know, some people say it's mental he says slow down and feel this <laughs> because it's mental if you do it mentally it will be mental Anyway, I had to jump in and bring this to a close. For some reason, my iPad it only have a second certain capacity to record, and then it stops. And it stopped, and it's probably good. So thank you for listening. I'll continue next time. Um, if you like this, me going on about these sayings of Jesus, I would. And I think uh, it makes these sayings a little bit more understandable now and um, I think they also have no end to where they can travel so I had to cut in I hope it makes sense and um, I will come back to this um, incredible trilogy that I would like to one day put together and don't speak about um just write you so well but these other works that really supported different aspects of transformation and um, definitely would like to finish this sayings of Jesus and obviously you're hearing the the frogs and cicadas and the orchestra of things that are outside now I have my window open a little bit so it's my door and it's um it's a massive concert out there. <clears throat> so again, thank you for listening. Um, please ask any questions or uh, give me some feedback. I'm happy to hear anything. Um, I'd like to share. And um, yeah, hope you guys are having a beautiful day or night or a beautiful life. I'll catch up with you soon.